I am in Columbus, Ohio at COSI, the Columbus Center of Science and Industry. As the name suggests, this is a science museum in downtown Columbus. Some of the skyscrapers can be seen in the background. I have made the trek here specifically because it is currently home to the Marvel Universe of Superheroes special exhibit, and I have been really wanting to see that, but that is featured in a separate video. In this one we're going to start going through the main museum exhibits. Now I thought this was more of a children's museum, and there certainly is that element, but it turns out there's a lot of cool exhibits here. So it's going to be split up into two parts besides the Marvel exhibit. Anyways, let's get started by taking a look at these scrap metal dinosaurs outside. There's the T-Rex. At the front entrance, there is a Foucault's Pendulum that totally isn't being run by a motor. Back in the 19th century, this experiment proved the rotation of the Earth, and throughout the course of the day it's going to knock down all of these marbles. The first exhibit is the ocean. Through the shipwreck entrance, we enter a sea cave. Oh wow! This is actually amazing. That right there is a giant statue of the mighty Poseidon, the Greek god of the oceans and water. He has a rather spectacular chamber here at Kosai. They also have these perfect laminar flows that you can control. Ooh. Here's a station to manufacture some big waves. You can also balance balls on water. I'm impressed with this. This is a very well themed exhibit, but there's more to it. This room is themed after the inside of a ship, maybe even a submarine. Especially because there is a small submarine in here. This is known as a mini sub. I'm not sure how old this one is as they don't have a placard about it. Visitors can descend into the submarine and experience the claustrophobia. So this is what it's like inside these mini subs. Very tight quarters and I can't imagine being in here several hundred feet deep underwater. That's actually pretty awesome. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> 
I wonder where this tunnel leads. It looks like some sort of submarine command room. I'm not sure what these buttons are supposed to do. We can put pressure on this diver to make him go up and down. Here's a model pirate ship. I will mention that there used to be a replica of the Santa Maria, one of Christopher Columbus's ships, right by this museum in the Scioto River, but sadly it closed in 2014. I never got to go to it, and it's probably gone forever. And back here there's a little lab room with some interactive features. There's a little taxidermy black bear and a raccoon. Here are some fossils including trilobites. There's some crows, more fossils, more avians, and even more fossils. There are some aquarium tanks in here as well. That is a woodland box turtle. And this is a spotted turtle. They live in Ohio's meadows and wet prairies. Here are some displays about recycling. Above the water fountain, this display shows that we apparently drink water out of something that looks like this. This is a redwood stump. This tree was between 950 and 1,150 years old before it blew over in 2002. So here it is cut to view the rings, showing some long ago historical events that it lived through. Now it is time for rad basketball. That sounds amazing. She's very excited, as you can see. First crowd gets it, and a point for the Hawks team! First of all, they can't find it. Oh, look, little struggle. Another point for the Hawks team, two in a row. Your sister's going to steal it, and there we go. Point for the blue team! Orange quickly takes it down the court. Well, that was cute, I guess. Can't say I'd ever seen rats play basketball before. Moving on to the Dinosaur Gallery. Looks like it's put on and curated by the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. I love that place, it's one of the oldest and best museums ever, so this should be great. Especially since it starts out with this T-Rex skeleton. Now this is a cast replica, along with a lot of the dinosaur fossils in this exhibit, but still, that is rather epic. This is an animated model of how a T-Rex walked, or rather rampaged, based on relatively recent reconfigurations made to the skeleton. This is the big femur bone of a Daspletosaurus found in Alberta. Here is the 8 foot long femur of a Titanosaur. They weighed about 70 tons. This is a steel and fiberglass Apatosaurus, a full-scale 3D version of a digital rendering made on a software program that was able to predict its joint ranges based off real fossils. 
These are some massive vertebrae of an Apatosaurus. It had a pretty long and large neck to support. Here's a toe bone and claw of an Apatosaurus. It is believed that it basically tiptoed around. Here are some fossilized tracks of dinosaurs found in New England. Here's a replica dino track fossil that lights up. This is the foot of a small carnivorous dinosaur, which is a lot like that of a modern turkey. Here's a cast of a Tyrannosaurus rex footprint. The tracks of many dinosaur species very much resemble the tracks left by ostriches. Apparently they are close relatives. This is a Pronocephale skull cast. It has extra thick layers of bone. This is the skull of a late Cretaceous Triceratops. Some dinosaurs had horns and spikes on their faces. In the center is a Triceratops nose horn. Here's the skull of a baby Protoceratops. They must have grown to be pretty large. These are the horns of an Anchiceratops. They were like Triceratops, but they also had these horns on their forehead. This Pentaceratops skull was discovered in New Mexico. There are lots of horned dinosaur skulls in this exhibit. This is a Styracosaurus skull. Those are some Parasaurolophus skulls. They had some weirdly shaped heads. Here's a comparison between a Pachycephalosaurus and a modern bighorn sheep skull. They both use their heads to fight, though I think the dinosaur would win pretty easily. Here's a Stegosaurus skeleton. They lived about 150 million years ago, and the fossils for this skeleton were discovered in Wyoming. This is a really interesting tableau featuring Liaoning, China, 130 million years ago. Since the 1990s, it has been one of the most important fossil sites in the world. Lots of interesting mammal, amphibian, plant, and yes, dinosaur fossils have been discovered there. Based on that evidence, this diorama has been created, featuring a regular prehistoric day in the lives of some long extinct creatures. This talks about how the dinosaurs went extinct, most likely a meteor impact, but there are some other theories. These are some samples of KT boundary, believed to be evidence of that asteroid or comet that caused the mass extinction event. Luckily about half of life survived, so we exist. During the Cretaceous period, there were some colossal crocodiles. That's the school of one on the left, compared to a modern alligator skull on the right. This is a Bambi Raptor, a mini dinosaur that was very similar to birds. That is a fossilized dinosaur embryo. That's interesting. It seems like for this section of the exhibit, they're hammering the point that dinosaurs were similar to both modern birds and crocodiles. For example, they both used nests and laid eggs. As exemplified by the Cytopate guarding its nest, that is a fossilized dinosaur embryo. Here are some more fossilized dinosaur eggs. Notice the one on the left had a recently hatched baby on top. This is interesting. The dinosaur was fossilized while carrying two eggs that you can clearly see in there. This Cytopate was fossilized while positioned over its nest with its forearms spread out to protect the eggs from the cold or the heat. This is a greater Rhea believed to be the largest bird in the Americas. For further comparison, there's a crocodile and a bird's nest, so that means they're basically dinosaurs, right? Here are a bunch of schools of small dinosaurs and present day animals. They all have some similar features. These are some taxidermied reptiles, like an alligator and iguanas. So again, they're basically dinosaurs. These unfortunate souls were just hanging out 
when a sand dune collapsed on them 75 million years ago. Here's a T-Rex outline that really illuminates its pea brain. Big dinosaurs like the T-Rex had wishbones, similar to many modern mammals. Although a T-Rex wishbone would be hard to break off, the feet and footprints of dinosaurs are very similar to many birds. This Therizinosaur was a feathered theropod who had some awesome big claws. Here are some Velociraptors, which are believed to be different from how they appeared in Jurassic Park, in one part because of their similarities to birds. This is a fuzzy dinosaur. Before this museum, I don't think I'd ever seen a feathered dinosaur. It is now believed that the Eutyranus had lots of feathers, or rather proto-feathers. Obviously they couldn't fly, but it is believed that these were advantageous to keep them warm, sense their environments, and attract mates. These are some samples of feathers. Dinosaurs did apparently contribute to their evolution. This is an Archaeopteryx fossil. It caused a sensation when it was first discovered in 1861, as it was a dinosaur that had wings and feathers. At that time, it correlated with Darwin's new theory of evolution and natural selection, showing how this species was a transition between non-avian dinosaurs and birds. These are some more fossil casts that suggest dinosaurs with feathers, despite their inability to fly. These late dinosaurs showed that smaller ones started specializing to get to fly. And finally, here are some bird fossils. And these are some little insects and feathers preserved in fossilized amber. They're over 100 million years old. Next up, there is an exhibit about Cuba, also curated by the American Museum of Natural History. This is neat. A beautiful antique car that was imported to Cuba over 60 years ago, before the revolution and embargo. Since many Cubans still have and maintain American-made cars from the 50s similar to this one and use them to get around, there are classic cars everywhere in Cuba. There's some nice architecture here with a variety of exhibits about Cuban natural history and culture. This is a Cuban bicycle taxi. That's one way to get around. And this is the costume of a tall street performer. They're still popular in Old Town Havana. This is a room full of tobacco. For a long time, Cuba has cultivated lots of tobacco and made cigars. While I'm not a fan of cigars, I do support Cuban cigar boxes. They make for great little boxes. This is a decorated altar throne of the Afro-Cuban Orisha faith. These are made for their deities like Ocean and Yamaya. And this is a more leafy Orisha altar that celebrates the three warriors, the deities that are considered to embody the powers of the forest. Now let's head to the Alejandro de Humboldt National Park, one of the most diverse ecosystems in the Caribbean. Some unique animals there include the Desmares hutia and the Cuban solnodon on the right with its venomous saliva. Humboldt National Park is famous for its colorful birds. There are also hundreds of beautiful butterfly species and a plethora of snails. This is a bearded anole, similar to the chameleon in some ways, especially in the weird eyes. This is a boa constrictor. This one is from Central America, but it is similar to the Cuban boa that hunts at Humboldt National Park. And there's a Cuban tree frog hanging from the glass. There are some really cool caves in Cuba that are home to owls. Mainland Cuba and some of the smaller islands nearby had indigenous people. There's a big replica of some rock art found in a cave. Here's the skull of an extinct Cuban monkey compared to the skull of a modern monkey. There are also some rich coral reefs off of Cuba in the Caribbean with big sea life like sharks.
There is also the Zapata Peninsula wetlands, covering about 1.5 million acres. Mighty crocodiles live there. This exhibit is really good, and I do hope things with Cuba improve in the near future, as I'd really like to go there, especially to see Finca Vigia, Ernest Hemingway's home. This is a small exhibit sponsored by Honda called Meet the Innovators. They have some displays about their automotive innovations, enhancements, and testing. This is an experimental NSX supercar. This is a replica of the Friendship 7 capsule. I have seen the real one in both Washington DC and Boston, but this replica is cool too. Central Ohio's own John Glenn was the first American to orbit the Earth in a little capsule just like this. He grew up in New Concord, Ohio, and went on to be one of the earliest astronauts. Then he was a senator from Ohio for 24 years, and even went to space while senator. That is John Glenn's NASA identification card. This is a record of his heart activity during the orbital flights, possibly from Friendship 7. Here is a space food tube from the Mercury program. That Mercury capsule flight operations manual was used during training, and this little model belonged to the Astro Senator. There's also a display about Katherine Sullivan, the first American woman to walk in space, and a former president of this museum. I believe this moon was at the original location of this museum. I saw this in some old photos. This is a display about space stations. There's also a random display of Cracker Jack memorabilia in the space exhibit. Cracker Jack was an old brand of candies. Their products are considered as the first junk food. Cracker Jacks were very popular, especially in the early 1900s, as they usually came with some small toys. And they have an expansive collection of Cracker Jack toys here. It looks like during the 30s or 40s, they had a President Coin Series, where you could try to collect all the Presidents. I'm sure when I was a kid I would have tried to do that. So I hope you've enjoyed the tour so far. Continue to Part 2 of Kosai, where we continue up to the top floor, where they have the Streets of Progress, and an interesting health exhibit. Then there is also a separate video on the Marvel exhibit. Those videos are linked in the description. Thanks for watching.